All right, so our question today is, suppose you're in a scenario where there are multiple security alerts um, and you need to explain uh, both what the alerts mean and your plan to tackle the security issue. Um, and it's very technical, but you need to explain it to a non-technical executive. What would you do? Yeah, so I think that if I were to speak to an executive about something like this, um, I think the first thing that would come to their attention is if there was any critical security alerts. Um, so if there are, for example, like 10 alerts in the queue um, as a SOC analyst, and there were maybe two or three criticals, um, I would want to let them know that I want to handle the criticals first. So um, these ones, whether they are actually critical or not, that's kind of the first thing that I would want to evaluate. Um, so I would let them know that, um, hey, we're looking into these alerts. Um, they're they're marked as critical because um, X, Y, Z, whether it's they're touching like a critical asset or it's something that could potentially mean that our system is compromised. Um, and I would want them to know that those are the first ones that I'm going to address. Um, after that, I would kind of want to explain the lower level alerts. So for those non-criticals, I think I would want it to still the alert down to a non-technical level. So strip away any technical jargon and kind of make them understand what the risk and business impact is. Um, mm -hmm. So I would say, for example, instead of a SQL injection against a web application, um, there's a customer facing website that we have that's being probed by potential attackers. Um, and this is something that could result in maybe a potential data breach um, or something like that that would affect the brand reputation. So kind of make them understand what the risk is um, and what the business impact would be if um, this alert were not triaged. Um, yeah, and that's kind of how I would go down the list, I think. Okay, yeah, I like the way that you're able to distill that down into more like layman's terms. Um, so I'm curious, uh, let's say in this scenario that the executive also has access to whatever dashboard is showing all of the alerts um, and they're pretty alarmed by it. How would you explain to them like why some of those alerts are not as critical as others? Yeah, so I would say that, um, you know, we've we've put in the work to tune these alerts so that we understand right away if it's critical or if it isn't. Um, so, you know, this this comes with a lot of like data training um, with a lot of uh, analyst eyes and we're making sure that we're able to quickly identify if something is critical and whether it's, you know, high or medium. Um, and we especially pay attention to the criticals to make sure that um, we are able to address those right away, because if those have any, you know, um, business impact, then that would be, you know, the most critical issue to address, so. Well, it might be an example of a critical issue that might also have, like, a very high business impact. Yeah, so a critical issue would be um, maybe a non-admin user logging into um, an admin database. Um, mm -hmm. So if you saw something like that, um, maybe the alert would say um, non-admin user logging into database. Um, for there, we would know that this person typically would have no reason to log into um, a database like that. And we want to make sure that we um, address the user directly um, and quickly to make sure that um, they're not compromised. And we want to make sure that they didn't touch anything on the database that they shouldn't be. Okay, yeah, that makes a lot of sense. And what about something that would be non-critical? Um, yeah, so uh, maybe the thing I mentioned earlier, so like if there's a SQL injection attempt against a web application, um, so this doesn't necessarily mean that the attacker was able to get through. It just means that they're trying to, you know, get from the customer facing website into our backend database or our backend systems. Um, and it's something that looks scary because, you know, it has kind of like the fancy technical jargon, um, but it's something that is pretty typical and we see um, pretty often. Um, and it's like that you can kind of just make sure that um, there's nothing unusual about it and that it wasn't a successful attempt, and you can kind of close it after that. So I think that's a good reason to to reduce the the technical talk to make it less kind of scary, um, especially for executives. Um, and you just kind of want to explain like what the potential impact would be. Mm -hmm. Okay, and how would you explain to them how you would prevent something like that from happening again in the future? Yeah, so a, a way to prevent something like that from happening in the future would either either be to use like a web application firewall. Um, so these are uh, kind of for bigger companies typically, but there's something that will filter out SQL injection attempts. So um, if there's something, you know, SQL injection attempt or something similar um, where they're trying to manipulate the user input to access a backend system, um, it will, you know, quickly like drop those requests altogether or it will kind of um, aggregate them so that you can still see them, but they're not necessarily making their way to your alert dashboard. Um, so that, you know, not having analysts waste time by, you know, looking and discarding the alerts.
Um, so yeah, I think the, the WAF is a really good way to do it. Sorry, web application firewall or WAF um, is a really good way to, to reduce those alerts. Okay, great. Um, yeah, and would you try to provide any documentation in the future to like help like non-technical executives understand sort of your job function and what you do on a daily basis? Yeah, absolutely. So this is something that um, that we try to do. I try to do personally at every stop that I have is have like an executive dashboard. Um, so whether that's mm -hmm. like a recurring report, um, which we do typically monthly, um, or just a dashboard that they can log in and view, uh, you want to have um, you know all the alerts that are have been closed, all the alerts that are still open um, by severity. So you'd want to have like your low, me your lows, your mediums, highs, and criticals. Um, so we'll have like a nice bar graph that will show you know how many alerts are still open. Um, and then you would want to have like the um, the attacks that are happening in like typically a pie graph so they can see, oh, we're having, you know, a lot of um, weird internal traffic or we're having a lot of um, threat actors attacking us from from China or from Russia or something like that. Um, and that's a really good way to have them um, ac have office information without needing to, um, you know, spend time explaining to them um, what's happening in, in your environment. Yeah, and I'm sure it's very helpful to them to be able to check that anytime they want and have access to like real time updated information and um, without necessarily needing to ask you guys to do even more work to get out of that. Yeah, I think so, because I'm sure they don't want to spend time talking to an analyst or an engineer anyway. Um, it's just easier for them to to just have that report ready for them, um, you know, whenever they need it. So, yeah, I think it's it's a really um, important thing to have uh, that communication with executives but also um, without having unnecessary time spent um, in meetings or anything like that. Perfect. All right. So it sounds like we've covered a lot of different aspects of communicating very technical security issues to non-technical -te uh, people that you work with. I'm curious to hear from you. Um, what did you like about this answer and what do you think you would modify for future interviews? Um, yeah, I, I really liked, um, I really liked the question and I, and I liked the, the way that it was answered as well. Um, I think that if you have a strategy for communicating with um, whether it's upper management or executives um, beforehand, um, I think that that's a really important skill and something that engineers will definitely look for. Um, so you want to be prepared to kind of explain how um, you can distill very complicated you know, technical issues down to an executive level, um, because it's just a really important skill to have. So. Um, I, I did, I'd like the answer um, and I like the back and forth. And I think that, uh, it's something that you can kind of more pull out of an interviewer rather than something they can present, if that makes sense. Um, so it's also like the interviewer will be able to, to understand um, more if the, if the interviewee uh, can communicate that effectively. Right. Yeah. And I like that you mentioned multiple different types of communication as well. You mentioned um, both how you would communicate like ad hoc for, about specific security alerts, but also like on a routine basis through regular reports and through providing like an easy to understand dashboard. Um, and that really showed that like you're good at communicating in your job in whatever way is required. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. And it, it is really important. It's something that actually does happen like every day. So I think it's, yeah. it's something to be prepared for, for sure. Yeah, I'm sure. <laughs> all right. So thank you so much for uh, teaching us all about your job today. Uh, I think your answers are super informative. And thanks, everybody, for watching. Good luck if you have any upcoming interviews. Bye, everyone.